so today let's take a look inside of a computer power supply to see how does it work and how to repair it when it doesn't. This one has AC in, a switch, a big fan and a lot of outputs of various voltages and it's a classic standard ATX power supply. Caution, do not remove this cover. Trained service personnel only. This is exactly what I wanted to say. And now we can open it up. There are four screws in it at the top, which I'm going to remove. And that's it. So here you can see the internals, there is the fan, this is the mains in with some interference filters, then it goes here into another interference filters, some capacitors inductors, another capacitor, there should also be a fuse here, and an NTC thermistor to limit the inrush. It's this black one. It looks a little bit like a capacitor. Can you see it? This is the thermistor. And there is some metal oxide varistor for protection against overvoltage. And a bridge rectifier. This one is made of discrete diodes instead of a monolithic bridge. There are two capacitors on the primary side and a discharging resistor for them. And there are two heat sinks, one on the primary side and the other one on the secondary side. Here you can see three transformers, some output inductors and output capacitors. There are basically two power supplies a main power supply and a small auxiliary power supply of 5 volts. The small 5 volt power supply is quite boring. It's a classic power supply with one transistor and maybe a tiny auxiliary transistor, a small transformer and a diode and an output capacitor and it's very similar to a USB power supply or a USB charger. And this one is only giving 5 volts, 2 amps. And then there is the main power supply with two transistors, usually in half a bridge, a big transformer and a lot of rectifying diodes, and filter inductors and output capacitors. The main power supply has usually a high power, usually from 200 watts to about 1 kilowatt. It has the two transistors driving this big transformer and it has several output voltages so there are several secondaries and several rectifying diodes. And there is a filter inductor at the output and there are actually several inductors but they are all on one core. And of course several capacitors for several different voltages. So there is a small transformer for the small power supply and a big transformer for the big power supply. And you have probably noticed there is one more transformer. And this one is a base driving transformer. It's not delivering any power to the output, but it's driving the basis of those transistors. In a computer power supply the control chip is on the secondary side. It's here. But to drive the transistors on the primary side, the signal has to be isolated. So this is why there is a driving transformer. And the older style computer power supply has NPN transistors in it instead of MOSFETs. This is the older design. There is also a big heavy inductor in it and this is power factor correction inductor. It's here to improve the power factor of this power supply. The oldest computer power supplies didn't have any and this one has so called passive power factor correction and it's basically just an inductor in series with mains. And the latest ones have so called active power factor correction which is an electronic circuitry. 
In this power supply there are examples of three different core constructions. This one has so-called iron core. It's made of iron sheets or iron layers. Those transformers have ferrite core as well as this interference filter. And finally there is an inductor at the output and this one has iron powder core. This is basically made of fine iron powder pressed together. There is a fan which is running on 12 volts DC and because those transistors are switching quite a high power they have to have a heat sink. And the same applies to those rectifying diodes at the output. There is quite a high current at the output so those diodes require heat sinking. You can see the output voltages and currents. There is 3.3 volt output, 5 volt, minus 5 volt, plus 12 and minus 12 volt output. The currents are quite high. 30 amps here, 32 and 14 amps. And this is the main power supply which is off in standby. And then there is the auxiliary power supply which is still on. By the way it says trained service personnel only, no serviceable components inside. How the service personnel can repair it when there are no serviceable components? That's odd. So this is more or less the entire power supply and I'm not going to draw a full schematic of it because it's just far too complex. I'm going to draw a simplified schematic instead to explain how does it work. I'm not going to draw the small power supply because this one is almost the same as USB chargers. I'm going to draw this big power supply only. So this is the simplified schematic. The mains comes in. There is usually a switch, a fuse, an NTC thermistor to limit the inrush. There is the interference filter, sometimes a passive PFC, but it may be omitted. There is a bridge rectifier, a metal oxide varistor, for over voltage protection. There are two capacitors in series with discharging resistors or dividing resistors as well. And there is the half bridge with NPN transistors and a capacitor in series with the primary. The transistors are driving the primary of the transformer. This is the secondary side with several secondaries for several output voltages. Each secondary has a center top and two rectifying diodes in one package. There is a filter inductor and the output capacitor. So this is the 12 volt power supply and the 5 volt one is using basically the same system. Those two inductors are on a common core. Then there is a 3.3 volt power supply which is using a very strange system. There is a special inductor with a core that's easy to saturate and it's controlled by this PNP transistor. This is to regulate this voltage with more accuracy. The base of this transistor is usually driven by something like TL431. So there are three pairs of diodes which you can see in those three packages here, one, two and three. This is the main inductor with more windings on it and it's this one. Then there is the special inductor with a core easy to saturate and it's this one. And this individual inductor for 3.3 volts is this one. And there is also a control circuitry driving the basis of those transistors via this small isolation transformer. The control chip usually is TL494 or KA7500 which is the same as the first one. So this is more or less how the entire power supply works and on my website I have full schematics of some computer power supplies. See the link in the description. There is also how to modify this power supply into a bench power supply. And because this one doesn't work, I am going to show you how to repair it and tell you what are the most common failures. But because this video is already getting too long, I am going to put it into another video.
So this is Diagonal Wild and see you in my next videos.